Grade 12 Physics, Special Relativity, note number 3, Simultaneity and Time Dilation. We're going to start with Simultaneity. All this really means is when two events for one observer, when they happen, they may actually happen at different times for another observer which is moving relative to the first. So this just means that the occurrence of two events is a relative concept. When two events happen, it doesn't necessarily mean that they happen at the same time for one person versus another. So just because one person sees two things happen at the same time doesn't actually mean they happened at the same time. So this brings us to Einstein's Gedanken experiment. Gedanken is just a German word for a thought experiment. So, this is how it's going to be set up. Pretend we have a train moving to the right. On this train, um, is, uh, is there will be a boy standing, we'll call him Bob, standing exactly in the middle. And outside of the train, a girl will be standing, Alice. Now, right when they're matched up, two lightning bolts hit the train exactly at the same time. So we're going to try and figure out what Bob sees versus what Alice sees. At some time later, the train is still moving to the right. Alice is left behind, still at the platform. Bob has moved. But here, those were eight, that's where A and B were before. Alice is equidistant from both of those, so the light is going to travel from B and from A and get to her eyes at the same time. Bob, on the other hand, is now closer to B than to from A. So Bob will see B happen, and then we'll see A happen. So again, Alice sees both of the things happen at the same time, but Bob sees B and then A. If we want to put a number to time dilation, we have to derive a formula to show the different amounts of time that one person might observe versus another. Pretend we have a, a, a box, which is a spaceship here, and Bob is on the spaceship. He shines a bright light from the bottom to the top, and it reflects and comes back down. All right, the spaceship, which has a height of h, because light travels at a constant velocity, the time that Bob is going to measure, we can use the constant velocity formula. So it would be the distance divided by the velocity. The distance would be 2h and the velocity is the speed of light, c. So we'll call it equation number one. Alice, on the other hand, if this, she's standing on the ground and she sees the spaceship go by. So that's why there's three pictures. It's sort of the spaceship at different time intervals. She'll see the beam of light travel from the bottom to the top and then back down to the bottom again. So she sees a triangle being made. We can show that the speed of the spaceship with its velocity v we can represent that vector on the bottom, and it's going to match up exactly with the halfway mark. So what we want to do here is we want to see the time that Alice is going to measure. So just remember that Bob basically sees that dotted line, and Alice is going to see that triangle. But what Alice wants to do is she wants to create a mathematical ex expression to explain that dotted line. So we'll call that VA. So VA, for velocity of Alice, it's basically Pythagorean theorem. So we can make an expression for VA. Here we factor out the C and we get some sort of a root, 1 subtract V squared over C squared. So again, this is the velocity that Alice perceives. So now what we can do is we can find out the time that Alice measures. Again, it's a constant velocity formula. So time for Alice equals d over her velocity that she sees, va. We have that expression, so we can put that in. Again, the t distance is 2h. But what we notice here, we have 2h over c, which is the expression for Bob. So now we can relate the time that Alice measures to the time that Bob measures in this formula here. So, in general, 
now we have a formula where we can relate the two times. Here, T is the dilated time, so that would be the time for something that's moving. T naught is the rest time, so that would be the time taken for an object if it was at rest. V is the velocity of the object in meters per second, and then C is the speed of light in meters per second. If we check the unit analysis, on the left side, time is in seconds. In the right side, seconds over the root, meters per second squared, meters per second squared. All of that cancels out, so the seconds balance. So let's use this as an example. Let's pretend we have a pendulum that swings back and forth, and it takes three seconds to make one complete trip, one complete cycle to go forward and back. And this is the time taken at rest. But let's say we put this pendulum on a spaceship that goes past the window and the spaceship is traveling at 2.8 times 78 meters per second, so pretty close to the speed of light. If we looked at that pendulum going by, how long is it going to take to do one cycle? So let's use the formula here. So 3.0, remember, is our rest time. Here we put in the velocity of the spaceship, and now we just make a calculation. We find that when we look at it going past the window, it's now going to take about 8.4 seconds to do the same thing. So it's going to take a longer time to do the same thing. So it's actually going to make the pendulum look like it's going in slow motion on this spaceship. So the spaceship is going pretty fast past the window, but the pendulum on the spaceship is going to look like it's going slow. So normally, three seconds for back and forth, but now it's telling us 8.4 seconds to go back and forth. This is the essence of time dilation. Now this might seem far-fetched, but really, is it true? There's two examples on this page that should go to show that it actually does happen. The first one is about muons. So muons are created high up in the atmosphere, about four kilometers up and higher. Um, they happen whenever cosmic radiation hits particles in the atmosphere. These new smaller particles pop out and they're going 99% the speed of light and they head directly for Earth. Now muons, they only last for about 2.2 microseconds. So if classic, classic physics happen, they're only going to travel about 600 meters before they dissolve. But the problem is we actually do detect them on Earth's surface. So because they're moving near the speed of light, that 2.2 seconds becomes di microseconds becomes dilated and they actually now can travel further distance. They can travel about 4,800 meters, which is more than enough to reach the surface of Earth. So if time dilation didn't happen, we wouldn't detect any muons whatsoever. Second one, um, flying clocks. So back in the 70s, we put atomic clocks that were exactly synced to each other, one on a jet flying east, one on a jet flying west. We let them fly around for a while, got them to land again, looked at the clocks, and then see if they matched up. The jet flying west gained 2.3 nanoseconds, and the one flying east lost 59 nanoseconds. So another example of relativity.